Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free. My name is Julianne Harris and praise God, I've been arrested by God's goodness, by His grace, by His love, and by His mercy. And therefore, I've been set free from fear, pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life. I've been set free from. Today is August the 18th in the year of our Lord 2024 and I'm continuing on this series called Who is God? And <clears throat> every week I'm saying the same thing which is God is who he is um, apart from what you believe about him but you will only experience God to the level that you believe who he is. If you don't believe God's a good God, you're not going to see the goodness of God. If you believe that God doesn't do miracles today, guess what? You're not going to see a miracle. If you don't, if you believe that God doesn't heal today, you're probably not going to see yourself healed. So it's so uh, big, this subject of who is God in your life, because, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of the people that you see that that are walking in the fullness of, of, of their Christian life, it's because they understand and know who God is. And then nobody can take them off of that. So there's nobody that can be like, well, God's a bad God. No, you're like, no, I already know from scripture that God's a good God. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So let me do my basis scripture because I got a lot I want to cover today. But my basis scripture is 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. And it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God, not through anything other than the knowledge of God. Grace and peace is not multiplied to you if you pray for it and beg for it and ask for it and plead for it. Grace and peace are multiplied unto you through knowing who God is. Why? Because God is such a good God. Only good and perfect gifts come from God. There's no no bad gift from God. He's not causing sickness. He's not sending sickness. He's not sending things into your life that uh, are testing you. Oh my goodness. I have to tell you, I watched this Christian movie, Christian quote unquote movie that I was looking forward to seeing it, but it was basically the whole movie was based on the theology of Job and how God tests you. God allows the devil to do things to you in order to test you to see if you will still praise him in the midst of the mess. Oh my goodness. I was like, especially since I've been teaching on this now for a few weeks, I'm just like, oh, it is giving the wrong image of God and it's not truth. It's not truth. And if your theology, if your idea of who God is, is based out of the book of Job and not the entirety of Job, if, you know, the thing is, is people get to the, people don't understand that when you read towards the end of Job, <clears throat> Job repents. He's like, I thought I knew you, but I don't know you. So let, let me not get off on that tangent. Let's continue <laughs> on this series that grace and peace is multiplied unto you folks through the knowledge of who God is. There's no other way to have grace and peace multiplied, not just added, but multiplied. Because when you start understanding what I'm sharing with you, grace and peace comes. Then, then your circumstances don't rock you because you know who your God is and you know where he stands and you know how he's dealing with you in this situation. It is so amazing. And, you know, um, in this new transition that I'm in with my job, you guys, I get to sit and listen to testimonies of how God has delivered people and set them free. And um, once they got an idea of who their real identity is and, and how God deals with them, the, the freedom and the peace and the joy and the love and the grace and the peace that is multiplied unto people, I get to hear it all day long. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so <clears throat> today I want to pick up where we left off. So remember, in my mind, in Julianne's world, the Bible is split into three sections. The first 2,000 years, <clears throat> God was dealing with mankind through grace. 
It was a grace covenant. He wasn't imputing sin where there is no law. We saw that last week. If you didn't watch last week, I would encourage you to go check it out. So that's the first 2,000 years. The next 2,000 years, God brings the law to slow down sin, to show mankind that they aren't able to live a holy life. And death and destruction, sin was in the world and it was killing people. But there was no transgression if there was not a law. So God brought the law so that he could slow down sin. So that's 2,000 years. And then the last 2,000 years, we've had Jesus who fulfilled the law, who took all the punishment for sin, past, present, and future sin. Praise God. So those are the three levels, but the majority of my life, I misunderstood who God was because I didn't understand God in the Old Testament. I didn't understand the covenants. I didn't understand these things. And so what happens is, is you get, you can't figure out who God is. Like, who is he? Is he, is he going to strike you down? Is he going to, you know, if you do something bad, is he going to, you know, um, or is he going to bless you? Like, who is God? It seemed like he was different in the Old Testament versus the New Testament. And in fact, he wasn't. He was loved the entire time. So last week in Genesis, we saw that Adam and Eve fell. They instantly became self-aware, self-conscious. They hid themselves. And here's a little um, uh, hand grenade for those of you that think that God can't commune with an unholy sinner. What happened after Adam and Eve sinned? God comes to the garden. God did not change. He's never changing. God comes to the garden knowing that Adam and Eve had sinned. And he talks to them like he always did. He was like, Adam, where are you? And Adam's response, what was Adam's response? Oh, the woman that the, you gave me, Lord. <clears throat> he didn't say Lord, but he said, the woman that you gave me, she did take of the tree and she gave it to me to eat. And then God instantly asks Eve, what is this that you have done? And what did she do? She pushes the blame again. She says, oh, the serpent beguiled me and and convince me to eat and so i did eat there's no ownership of their wrongdoing there's no repentance there's not no saying you know what we went opposite to what you told us to do god and we're so sorry there was no repentance in them and and that's what we see so much today is that we make wrong choices we um we live in a fallen world now that adam and eve sinned the minute Adam and Eve sinned, that's when the curse came, you guys. That's when the curse came up across the earth. It, it's not, oh, there's so much I have in me, can you tell, that I just want to get out. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to get it all out to you. But I just want to tell you that <clears throat> this we live in a fallen world. We make bad decisions. And we can't turn around and put the blame on somebody else. If you've been done wrong, guess what, honey? Everybody in this world's been done wrong. So are you using that as an excuse to stay stuck in bad behavior, to stay stuck in a substandard life, to stay stuck in depression and guilt and condemnation and whatever you may find yourself stuck in? Are you using what somebody else did to you as an excuse to do that? So I'm not trying to put guilt and condemnation on you. I'm trying to encourage you and exhort you to know that God's not changing. He's not changing his mind about you. And if you find yourself stuck in these things, guess what? You can change. And you got to do it right up here, right in between your ears. That's where the change starts. That's where the change happens. And that's where your life will radically change. This was me, you guys. This was me. When I came to Bible school, I started hearing these truths and I would listen, not only while I was in school, but I would come home and I would listen to things about the true nature of God, about the love of God, about all these different things that I realized I believed incorrectly for the majority of my life. Definitely for the majority of my born again life. Hallelujah. And it started to change my world. It started to change my way of thinking. And then I realized, hey, as I'm changing, my life is changing too because I'm starting to believe right. You believe right in order to live right. You don't live right 
in order to get right with God. No, you understand how right you are with him. And then all of a sudden, a byproduct of that is you start to live right. See, religion says you must do in order to get. And, and the simplicity of the gospel is that you already got. And now that will change your do. <laughs> I crack myself up. So anyways, <clears throat> let's go to Genesis. I want to pick up where we left off last week because last week we saw that Adam and Eve sinned. They fell. God put them out of the Garden of Eden lest they should take of the tree of life and live forever in that fallen state. That would be horrific. And so God pushed them out of the Garden of Eden and protected the tree of life for you and I's benefit out of love. He was like, oh my, he was like, he didn't say, oh my goodness. <clears throat> but he was like, lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever in this fallen state, I need to put them out of the garden. And then he protected the tree of life so that they couldn't come and eat of the tree of life. That is out of love. Not because he couldn't fellowship with sinful man. It's not true. And if you believed it, I'm just asking you to open your heart <clears throat> for God to reveal to you that you are not believing truth. Praise God. Let me get a drink of uh, something because my throat feels dry. Okay. <clears throat> so, Genesis. Let's look at Cain and Abel. So, Adam and Eve, let me get us up to speed. Adam and Eve have been pushed out of the garden and now Adam knows Eve, basically um, they have children. They have Cain and Abel. So let's pick up this story in Genesis chapter four, verse three through nine. All right, let's just start in, in verse one of chapter four, okay? And it says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep and and Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay, so verse three, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain, uh, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and his to his offering, he had not respect. Oh my goodness. I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about that. No, let's just stop <laughs> because I tend to uh, bite off more than I can chew, so to speak. So if we look at this, we see that Cain and Abel both bring an offering unto God. How do they know to bring an offering unto God? Hmm? Tell me that. I would say that they know because God told them, because God fellowshiped with them, because because they had communion and communication with God. These are people that, see, I never understood this. God put Adam and Eve out of the garden to protect them, but he still fellowshiped with them. He still talked with them, and we're going to see this. We're going to see this, but otherwise, how does Cain and Abel know to bring an offering unto the Lord? Selah. So God has respect unto Abel's offerings, but unto Cain's offering, he didn't have respect. And it says, and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Hmm, look at that. The Lord said. The Lord is speaking to Cain. The Lord is fellowshipping and communicating with fallen man. I was never I was never told this. I was never taught this. Or maybe maybe I was, I just never saw it because for some reason religion has painted God as an evil, mean can't stand sin God I agree he can't stand sin he loves the sinner but he hates the sin and that's why he sent himself through Jesus remember God the Godhead is three in one God the Father 
the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So God sent himself to be a sacrifice, a propitiation for our sins. And not for you and my sin only, but for the sin of all mankind. Why? Because sin destroys people's lives. It's not God destroying people's lives. Oh my goodness, I wish, I wish everybody could understand this. And I, I don't know why they want to think that God is a mean, angry, spiteful, hateful God. Because he's not. He's like sin is, is wrecking you. Back to Cain and Abel. So God comes to Cain, who he's not, he's not pleased. He didn't have respect for Cain's, <clears throat> for Cain's sacrifice. And so Cain is upset. His countenance is fallen. And God says, what's wrong, Cain? Why is your countenance fallen? And in verse 7, it says, If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Hmm. And unto thee shall be, shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. What, what shall rule over him? Sin. Sin. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Cain is the first murderer in, on record. The first murderer in the whole world, on the whole earth, was Cain. And what does it say? And the Lord said unto Cain. We need to get this settled in the basement level of our hearts that God is not not holding sin against you. He didn't hold it against them. This is how I can say this is... The nature of God is that for the first 2,000 years, he dealt with man in grace. He still came and talked to Cain, the first murderer on the whole earth, on the whole planet. This is the first recorded murder in all of mankind. And, and some of us, we think maybe that's not a big deal. We, we've become so hard-hearted to it because every movie, almost every movie, every action movie, people die. People are getting murdered. People are getting killed. We see it all over our whole life. If you grow up with TV, you are going to see thousands of murders by the time you turn 18. But this is unprecedented, folks. This is the first murder on the whole planet. And God does what? Does he say, oh, I can't fellowship with you, Cain. You are evil. You have sinned. No, he didn't do that with Adam and Eve. Instead, out of love, he put them out of the Garden of Eden. And now Cain kills his brother. And God comes and speaks to him. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Ooh-wee. Just that statement alone shows familiarity. Just that statement alone for Cain to lie to God Almighty. First of all, if God were to show up to me, I would probably pass out because I'd be thinking this ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> but because God had been fellowshipping with them and had been spending time speaking with them, Cain knew God. And he knew him to the point where he lied to him. God's like, where's your brother? Cain's like, I don't know. Am I my brother's, am I my brother's keeper? Like he straight up lies to God Almighty. <clears throat> and look at what God says. And Verse 10, it says, and he said, this is God, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. See, this is another part of the curse. Which hath opened up her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy, from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater 
than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. God didn't say, <laughs> God didn't say you won't behold my face. God didn't say any of this. Cain took what God said, and then he just runs with it. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that how we do it? Isn't it crazy how we will read something in the word and then we take it and we run with it like it's truth and it's certainly not. And he says, uh, from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a bag vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. He's saying a whole bunch of, he's just in his emotions. He's like taking this downward spiral. This is unprecedented. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him shall, st shall kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod at the east of Eden. Okay, let, let me share as much as I can from each of these it, from this story because it, if you can grab hold of this please hear me when I say if you can grab hold of this you are going to see God as love you are going to see God as grace in this whole situation so God says oh my goodness because you've spilt your your brother's blood on in the land the, the ground is crying out to me and he said because you've done this now when you till the land it's not going to yield its strength like this is this is bad sin affects the land i hope you understand what i'm saying this earth was not created for sin to abound that's why we see the things that we see let me get and let me not get off on this tangent but my point being is that god was like what have you done and he, and he says, this is what's going to happen. And then Cain takes it. And then he goes even further. Oh, from your face, I'll be hid. And I'll be a vagabond and I'll be wandering. God did say that. But he was like, and anybody who finds me will kill me. God's like, okay, no, that's not going to happen. So let me go ahead and put a mark on you so that nobody kills you. God protected the first murderer on the planet, on the planet, y'all. Isn't that amazing? That's our God. He is love. He is grace. Was he happy about the murder? Absolutely not. Was he condoning the murder? No, he was not. But an automatic consequence of the sin of Cain was that the ground would not yield its strength. Was that Cain, Cain left the presence of God. It didn't say God threw him out of his presence. God didn't say, I'm going to hide my face from you, Cain. No. Once again, sin causes you to run from God. And that's exactly what happened with Cain. Why? Because you're so sin conscious. You're so aware of your shortcomings. You're so aware of how you failed tremendously. And that makes you want to step away from a holy God. But meanwhile, God was not doing it. God was not doing it, folks. So in this portion of, portion of scripture that I read for you, Let's go over some points. Cain and Abel's offering shows that there was communication. There was communication be God, between God and a sinful man. Hmm, look at there. But yet God's going to... <sighs> God has sent his son to die for you. He has sent himself to die for you. So that you can become the righteousness of God. He who knew no sin became sin on the cross. That would be Jesus. So that you could be made the righteousness of God. <clears throat> is that truth? Yes, that's from the Bible. That is truth. But yet, how can we hear from pulpits in churches that, oh, God won't fellowship with a sinful man. God fellowshiped with sinful man the entire time, folks. That's a lie. And it's a tactic of... I think it's a tactic of religious people trying to get you to stop sinning, but they don't understand that if you understand, if you comprehend, if you get a grasp of how right you are with God, you'll stop wanting to sin. 
Sin no longer has control over you because you are walking in the goodness and the grace of God going, God, you love me even when I was a sinner. Even before I called on your name, you loved me. And now, now that I've accepted Jesus as the Lord of my life, now you love me with the same love that you love Jesus. See, you understand how right you are with God that he's not holding sin against you. He's not holding your past against you. He's not even holding your future sins against you because they've all been forgiven. You're like, well, how can God forgive future sins? All your sins were future when you, when Jesus died on the cross. Jesus ain't crawling up on the cross no more dying for your sins. They were all forgiven on the cross 2,000 years ago, but you chose to receive that forgiveness. You, you, it's by grace are ye saved, Ephesians 2, 8. It's by grace are we saved through faith. See, God's grace, God's grace put all the punishment and wrath and judgment for sin on the body of Jesus 2,000 years ago on the cross. That's grace that you are saved. But it's through faith. And what is faith? Faith is your positive response to what God's already done by grace. That's how you're saved. But yet, even though God's paid the punishment, God's already poured out his wrath on Jesus. This is in the last 2,000 years. He already put all of his judgment. And meanwhile, we're like, oh, God won't fellowship with sinful man. No, no, it's simply not true. Who is God to you? Who is God? Because we can see that for the first 2,000 years, God was dealing with mankind through grace. We can see that through Cain and Abel, Cain killed his brother. The first murderer on the planet was marked by God to protect him. It shows that Cain and Abel were having fellowship with God. The minute Adam and Eve sinned, God comes to the garden and is speaking with them. He puts them out of the garden through love so that they can't eat of the tree of life and live forever in the fallen state. Then Cain kills Abel. God protects Cain. And then it says that Cain left the presence of God. God didn't leave Cain. Cain's response to God shows familiarity. I already touched on that. When, When God comes to Cain and is like, where's your brother? I know not where my brother is. Am I my brother's keeper? He literally lies to God. Shows familiarity God protected Cain the first murderer on the earth and then Cain left the presence of God <clears throat> this is so huge you guys and and I I just want to challenge you today who is God to you God is not a mean God God has been dealing with mankind God dealt with mankind through grace the entire First 2,000, 1,600, 2,000 years, I forgot to check. God was dealing with them out of grace. This is who our God is. God created you and me for relationship with him. And sin, (laughs) sin separated God from man. And it wasn't on God's part. It was on man's part. See, the more you sin, the more you turn your back from God. You can see with Cain, Cain left the presence of God. God didn't leave Cain's presence. No, Cain, instead, knowing what he had done, knowing and having this guilt and sin consciousness, even though sin, there was no knowledge of sin apart from the law. So, But there was an inward knowing that he had done wrong because God was like, what have you done, Cain? Now, because you've done this, the, the... the earth will not yield her strength. You're going to wander about. God knew what was going to happen. And Cain left the presence of God. I know some of you watching, you have left the presence of God because of something that you did. And I'm here to tell you that God is not judging you on that sin. God's looking at you based upon whether or not you are in Jesus, whether or not you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you have, guess what God's seen when he looks at you? He sees Jesus. And he sees that your sins and your transgressions and your iniquities, he remembers no more. 
as far as the east is from the west, so has he taken your sin. He's thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness, you guys. This is who our God is. Who is God to you? What are you believing about God? Do you think that he's holding your sin and your mistakes over your head? Because it's simply not true. It is so not true. And I'm out of time. So if you enjoyed this message today, I would encourage you to share it because I'm sure it'll bless somebody else. Um, And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you hit subscribe and click the little bell, you should get a notification each and every time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can plan on a new video each and every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook at Arrested and Free, still not doing anything there. Um, Or you can send me a text message, as many of you do, do, at um, at 970-919-0459. My goodness, I almost forgot it. 970-919-0459. I think that's the number. (laughs) I don't even know what's happening today. (laughs) Anyways, make sure and know all of you that leave me comments and encouragement. Thank you for that. And I'm so glad that you're being blessed by these messages. And I would encourage you to meditate this week. Who is God? Who is God to you? Because it is making or breaking your victory or lack thereof in life. So have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.